Hello everybody, welcome to my first train review. I, uh, I realize it's been a while, I said I was going to put one on shortly after my first video, but stuff happened and actually I lost my original train, I uh, sent it back to England to be repaired, I never got it back, I was compensated for it uh, monetarily, but I never got the train back, so that was kind of sad, but a while ago on eBay, which was pretty cool, I found uh, this this model of the train, uh, Great Northern, uh, number 1470 with little n suffix, and we'll get into that, and uh, well here we go, this is the box. There's the train. I already unwrapped it. There's the top of the box, sides of the box. There's nothing because the actual box it was in is over there. And then here's this. Just gives you a little bit of detail on it. Here's a picture of the actual locomotive Great Northern. Pretty cool. I like how they give you that actual picture. And then it gives you some history on the A1 class locomotive and tells about how there were 52 A1s produced by 1924. And then they started making A3s, and I think they said they made about, yeah, 27 uh, A3 locomotives. And all the A1s were, built, re were rebuilt into A3s, except for this one, Great Northern, which actually was converted into another type of train, which is kind of sad, but, you know, hey, what you going to do? So, we have the Hornby model, which is great. It's awesome. It's great. Donald Trump hand signals. I love it. All right. So. Let's take a look at this. Let's get in close. Let's analyze. Okay, so first off, the A1 class locomotive is, uh, the Gresley A1 locomotive is my favorite type of locomotive, so I'm going to be maybe a tad bit biased, but this is the best looking locomotive I think Hornby's produced. There's the bias I might speak of, but in actuality, it's really good. Now, to be fully honest, when I got this off of eBay, I thought it was going to be in pretty good condition. Uh, I'll go into depth about some of the things that happened real quick. So the funnel, on the top of the funnel, there's some like white fuzz stuck to it. Like someone tried to put smoke, like a puff, like cotton balls or something almost, on the top. And you can't really see it that well, but you can kind of see it. Oh, my, thing, my thumb is in the way. There it is. It's right at the funnel. You can see kind of some white stuff, and I'll zoom in so you can see that in a minute. Uh, so that was kind of like, oh man, but you know, it's not horrible. And then on the other side, there's a bit of like somewhere someone dropped some glue and it's stuck to it, which was kind of upsetting. But again, it's it's pretty small, so it's not a big deal. And later on, I found out that on the wheels, I don't know if it's holding the chassis, the front chassis, the front two wheels, or I should say four wheels, front four wheels together to the top of the locomotive is some blue tack which I found pretty upsetting you know you should say those things when you're selling something on eBay they gave me a nice letter handwritten uh, sentiment and it said uh, hope you enjoy your product have Merry Christmas which was very nice so um, I will probably not leave a good review on their eBay uh, sellers thing but I will not tell you who they are because they did they did take the time to put a nice handwritten sentiment uh, but I will just say Folks out there, read those reviews carefully. Fine, with a fine tooth comb, examine the pictures they show you on eBay. And if you're not sure, email them a question about it or e email them for more pictures. And if they don't send it to you, I would not advise you to buy it. I would only buy from the model center, if, especially if I lived in America, which I do, uh, because they are reliable. I just got the TTS Flying Scotsman from over there, and it's a gorgeous model. It's really well done. And uh, but that's a little off topic because now we're focusing on Great Northern. So, actually, let me go close the door. I realize one's open. Okay, welcome back. So I went ahead and closed the door. So let's go ahead and keep looking at this locomotive. So what I love here is the Walsh's valve gear. This is great. I just love it. When you're going, when it's going around the track, you can get mesmerized in that. There's just so much like engineering and ingenuity behind that. It's great. I'm actually studying. I'm in college right now and I'm studying to be a mechanical engineer because I like British trains just so much. Uh, if anyone knows of British uh, steam locomotive uh, people that want someone to be a mechanical engineer, you just you give me the contact info. I appreciate it. So let's keep going. So there's Great Northern. There's its uh, I want to say license plate. It's not, and it's not a headboard either. That's what will go at the front of the train and say, like, Flying Scotsman or, uh, I don't know, Cornish Riviera. But that's its nameplate. Nameplate. There we go. Boom. There it is. 
this nameplate, and I'd like to point out to you that, uh, and I'm going to zoom in to do so. Uh, there we go. Zoom in. Focus, camera. Focus. Focus. Camera. Focus. Focus. Focus on my finger, camera. No? Focus. Come on. Almost there. Almost there. I saw it starting to focus. There it is. Alright, so that's really cool there. So this is Great Northern. And what's funny about it, actually, my dad thinks the C, I mean the G, looks like a C on Great Northern. So he's like, is that Great Northern? I'm like, no. It's Great Northern. Come on. Um, but... It's got really nice details. I can't zoom in too well with this camera, but you can. I think you can kind of make out some rivets. Let me grab a little tool or something to point stuff out with you. Sure, why not have a Hornby train track? So, let's see. Right there, those little black dots, there's some rivets there. And then it's got this really crisp red lining down the side of it. And even on the wheels, the white and the green and the black, you can't see the black. Let me zoom down so you can see the black. There it is on the center of the wheels. It's just so very crisp. And even the white lining on the side of the boiler, stripes going down, it looks like a white line, but it's actually white, black, white, and it's accurate to the LNER livering scheme. So it's really cool there. It's a great model. And we come down here, and here's this thingy that's metal and silver and cool, and it's like a Nike kind of swish almost, but it's not really. And, uh,. It's probably something to do with, I don't know, brakes or a reverser maybe. I'm not sure. And then we have a little uh, plate in the back that just says 1472 Great no, uh, no, just says 1472 LNER. Uh, and then we'll go up. And actually the people who I bought it from put little people in the cab, which is nice. Oop, wow, zoomed up too far. And there's uh, the two safety valves and the whistle. The whistle's the one at the way back. The nice standard LNER A1 dome. Nice. And then the tender, you know, it just says LNER1470. And it's got, let me, ooh, camera zoom, please. Uh, there we go. And it has the little end suffix, as you can see at the end. And that's just what they did at the beginning of the LNER uh, scheme for livering. They put the number on the tender, and they put an N next to it. I don't know why they did that. It didn't say. It says on the blockage. Uh, on the blockage, on the package, or the box, you may call it. This was the original GNR number, which also had an area and suffix. And so that's all it says about that. But this is uh, this is how it looked from 1923 to 1924. Overall, I want to point that out as well. Let me zoom out. All right, and then let me uh, let me reposition the camera, and we'll get a closer look. Okay. So let me pick up the tender. Let's look at the tender first. I think the tender's pretty cool. So we have the nice GNR rail tender uh, kind of thing going on here. We have removable coal load, which I don't feel comfortable doing right now. Uh, and there's some nice crisp lining on the tender on the bottom here. You can't see that too well. But it's like a red lining. And I think there it is, yeah. And then again, the, black, uh, the white, black, white uh, lining on the side. And then a really cool, actually there's a little teeny, you can't see it, but it's a teeny dot right there, which is not accurate. It's just uh, one another malfunction, but again, it's minute, so it's not really something to hassle over. And then you have all this gorgeous detail on the inside. I mean, look at that. It even has a little flap where the coal chute comes out. I mean, that sticks out. Look at that. Isn't that great, guys? I mean, even if you don't think so, I think it's great. Great. America. England. Great. Um... And it's got a little warning label here. It's got, I don't know what that is. I think one is for to let the water, maybe one's not to let the water in. You know, it's got probably something to do with the coupling of the actual tender to the locomotive. And then there's a little thing sticking up here. And it's really cool, guys. I mean, it's awesome. And then I don't know what this is. There's two things I'm not sure what they are. Let me pick up the track and show you. There's this right here. I don't know what that is. And then there's two little rings at the back almost. If you see those, yeah. I don't know what they're for, but if you could tell me in the description, I mean in the link or the, the you know, the comment section, that one, I'd appreciate it. So let me just set that down and let me pick up Great Northern. 
All right, I'm actually gonna just let him there because I don't want to drop it. Let me reposition the camera again. Hey guys, welcome back. So, okay, here's Great Northern up close. Also, when I got it, the front coupling had fallen off, which is kind of upsetting. But, you know, again, not a big deal. I kind of put it back on. Not all the way, but, you know, you can't really tell when it's going around the tracks. So what I really like about it is just uh, overall really just uh, love the model. When it's going around the tracks, all those imperf imperfections that it has melt away. Uh, and it's just a really nice locomotive. You kind of, like, can sit there and imagine yourself about to go through Greenwood Tunnel or on the East Coast Main Line, like you're driving it back in the 23 or 24. And for me, that's just the greatest, one of the greatest feelings is just to, you know, use your imagination. Because that's really what it is. It's 50% modeling, 50% imagination is model railroading. I mean, railwaying. And so uh, you can put a little headboard on there too, I believe. Um, and let's flip over to this side. So here's the little uh, maker's plate little gold thing and then here's the little uh, valve on the side and it had a little crack in it but I, I saw that and expected that and then uh, let's see oh, I'm seeing some little white lines I didn't see before but again I'm not, it's not a big concern right around the side here but again like I said not a big deal um so we have some nice little small details there and there and here's where that fuzz is um, let me zoom in. Uh, so you'll see there's like a little fuzz or something on the top of the funnel. And then a little white mark next to it. And it's like something gluey or where the paint got scratched. Uh, but when it's going around, you can barely see it. And, you know, it gives a look of character, I guess. Because, I mean, in real life it wasn't going to be perfect. Nothing is perfect, pretty much. I could get into a whole, you know religious thing be like Jesus and Mary are the only ones that are perfect well technically you can only you could say the Holy Trinity too but we're here for trains right now if you want to watch something religious go see Father Robert Barron he's pretty good about that stuff he's legit he's lit and then here's the train here's the wall she's valve here oh it's cool it's great and then there's the back wheel and let me flip it so you can see the, the one on the top I believe there's yeah you can see you can flip these the cab at the very top of the cab there's like little openings for ventilation you see it right at the top there you can open and close those which is pretty cool and then there's the people and let me uh, let me really try to zoom in with the cab because it's uh, it's exquisite it's really good I mean, they did a bang-up job here. I mean, 10 out of 10 for Hornby. Now, like I said, they didn't put the people in. But all that little detailing, I mean, they even got the fact that it's right-sided drive. As it went on in the railways, the L the A3s got pushed over to a left-sided left -sided drive. But this A1 captures how they were actually built originally as a right-hand sided drive locomotive. And you can tell that because I can't show you, but if you zoom in, you can see that uh oh they even put seats for the driver and that i'll be honest with you that's not accurate this the a1 didn't have seats for the driver but there's a little thing that just uh indicates that it's right hand drive and there if you look if you have one you look you can see it but uh it's really cool actually i think you can see it from right where you are it's right in there it's that little thing that the track is over it goes up and down. It's like gold and then silver. And then it's got the little door flaps and the little flap for the connecting to the tender. And guys, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and run it because I've been waiting to run it more. Okay, guys. So I just watched a video by uh, James Simpson on YouTube about a pug and about a, um, a BD well tank. And he did like a slow test. Uh, was it a terrier? Actually, it was all three. Uh, A1X terrier. And so let me see if I can't back the Great Northern up, and we'll give it a slow speed test. That's what makes me think of this. He did that with those. And note, this is only on DC power. And look at this. Look how slow it's going, dude. It's legit. Look at that. Oh my gosh. This is great. Northern. Oh. No, really though, this is super slow. Like I mean, super slow. 
Let's just take it in. I'm not even going to talk now. Let's just enjoy it. Actually, I hope it's not ruining the motor. But we're just going to enjoy it. Look at the Wolf Cheese Valve key here. It's legit. It's great. There's the Blue Tech. Blue Tech. Nemesis of the Great Northern. But again, we have to enjoy things, you know? Not too much. Well, again, let's get into that later. Alright, hey guys again, so I went ahead and removed the camera, and I've got three deluxe LNER coaches here. And I'm going to go ahead and hook Great Northern up to those, using its slow-mo. Beautiful. I bet it could have gone slower, but let's not, uh, let's not do that. So let's, let me position it. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that train great? It's beautiful, guys. Come on. It's great. Ow. There's a trash can behind me. Ignore the mountain of paper in the background. That's from the TTS Scotsman and its controller. So let's just get some shots of it running.